so in our previous video we have discussed about the ns introduction so in this video we are going to discuss about cholinergic system and the drug so mainly we will discuss about the drugs so first starting with parasympathomimetic drugs clear there are two groups of parasympathomimetic drugs the first one is directly acting means it will directly act on the receptor the second one is indirectly acting means it will increase acetylcholine action of the on the receptor by inhibiting acetylcholine stretch clear now these directly acting drugs are again divided into two groups the first one is esters those drugs which have ester bond and the second is alkaloid those which have which are derived from plants and trees clear now coming to the first first we will look for the esters clear so esters in the first is your acetylcholine this acetylcholine acts on both muscarinic and nicotinic receptor and it is quickly degraded by acetylcholine stress so they, it has short action and it is acting on both muscarinic and nicotinic in muscarinic mainly on m3 now because of this action on, on muscarinic sorry action on nicotinic it is non-specific action because nicotinic receptor is also present on ganglia of sympathetic nervous system okay all ganglia have nn type of receptor so acetylcholine can stimulate those sympathetic ganglia also so it has non-specific action clear now this non-specific action and this short action because of this two reason okay because of problem number one and two it is of no use as a drug the next one is methacholine m m means it will stimulate only m muscarinic receptor it will not stimulate nicotinic receptor but it also it is also degraded very fastly by acetylcholine stretch so it also has very short action yeah so it is also not used now one important point about methacholine that it acts on muscarinic receptor but mainly on m2 where all other drugs such as carbacol mainly m3 bethanicol mainly m3 acetylcholine mainly m3 this is the drug methacholine that acts mainly on m2 here yeah. now the next one is carbacol carbacol is formed by combining of carbamoyl group to the acetylcholine if carbamoyl group combines with the acetylcholine then carbacol will be formed and this carbacol will act mainly on m okay m receptor it also acts on n receptor and because of this it can cause because of this it is non-specific in action like here clear yeah. so it is also not used because of its generalized action but one important point here due to addition of carbamoyl group its degradation by acetylcholine stretch is very slow here yeah. so it can have long action next is your bethanicol it combines both b for both means it combines the characteristic of carbacol as well as characteristic of methacholine means it, it is acetylcholine combined with methyl group combined with carbamoyl group okay so methanic bethanicol has property of all the three that is acetylcholine itself here combining with methyl so characteristic of methacholine then combining with carbamol so characteristic of the carbapol group clear so this bethanicol is acting on mainly on m receptor not on n and it is also has long action so because of two these two reasons it is used okay the first drug that is your bethanicol so it acts on m3 receptor okay and it is mainly responsible for bladder and bowel movement now if it acts on bladder that is detrusor muscle then detrusor muscle will get contracted and there will be increased urination okay it also acts on sphincter but sphincter is getting released due to action of no mind it in sphincter get released due to action of no and these two detrusor muscle contraction and sphincter release causes increase in urination so it is given in treatment of retention of urine if patient has this problem that is retention of urine then it is given and retention retention of urine is seen mainly in bph okay post operative retention of urine is also seen why there is post operative retention of urine so there is two or three reason so urine retention is generally due to general anesthesia which is given during surgery even before surgery general anesthesia it causes retention of urine because it activate in it leads to inactivation of all muscles so there will be no contraction of muscle so there will be no urination second is that stress there is stress during surgery in patients so stress during surgery causes activation of sympathetic system which also leads to urinary retention and there is another reason also proposed that is electrolyte balance but we can correct electrolyte balance by giving ringer lactate okay ringer lactate is given for treatment of this so first is bph then second is post operative retention of urine the third one is overflow incontinence or it also known as atonic bladder if, if there is over over inflow incontinence or there is atonic bladder okay what does it means it means that your detrusor muscle is hypoactive so feeling of bladder is not sensed by that person okay this detrusor muscle has become hypoactive it does not able to contract so in that case you can also give this drug here yeah. now so the theory that is bph post-operative retention of urine and there is overflow incontinence or also known as atonic bladder now the first fourth one is post-operative paralytic ileus okay muscle of ileum which does not contract after surgery so it also help i have told your bowel and bladder movement both so it also help to increase your ileum movement clear yeah. now coming to the pharmacokinetics of this drug so this drug is given orally or iv and this is lipid insoluble okay because acetylcholine has positive charge as we discussed in our previous video so, yeah it is li lipid soluble so it can cross your membrane so it cannot reach to blood brain barrier so they have no action on cns 
this drug that is bethanicol is also metabolized by acetylcholine stage at slow rate so it has a longer action as we have discussed now side effects so it stimulate m3 receptor everywhere so there will be generalized action it can also lead to bronchoconstriction because of the stimulation of m3 receptor it can also lead to diarrhea okay if you are treating for urination then there will be diarrhea associated with it if you are treating for diarrhea then there will be increased urination okay and increased secretion because m3 receptors are present on smooth muscles okay and as well as glands so it will lead to the estimation of secretions now coming to the next drug that is alkylvert so we have discussed about uh, esters in which we have discussed about acetylcholine we have discussed about methanicol we have discussed about carbacol we have discussed about methanicol and methanicol is the most important and methanicol we have discussed in this post-operative retention a tonic bladder and the case of okay and the case of your post-operative paralytic illness now we will discuss about alkylvert so they are derived from plants and trees but they are under allopathic medicine category not ayurvedic now common properties of alkaloids so they are lipid soluble okay so they can cross membrane so they can enter into cns so their their action is seen in cns it can also enter under liver it also in takes entry into liver so there will be metabolism in liver because there is a general rule there is general rule that is lipid soluble drug 99 percent of lipid soluble drug are metabolized by liver whereas lipid insoluble drug is eliminated by your kidney okay now they are alkaline or basic in nature as we have discussed but maximum drugs are acidic maximum drugs are acidic okay few drugs are alkaline and one category is this alkaloids it also has non-specific action okay now coming to the side effects so type 1 hypersensitivity reaction can be initiated because of these alkaloids which will also cause irritation to GIT so nausea and vomiting are also associated with this drugs are pilocarpine and aerocolin okay aerocolin is not used now today but pilocarpine is very important drug clear so this is general body about your alkaloids so i will discuss in detail about pilocarpine so pilocarpine method of action is by stimulation of muscarinic as well as nicotinic receptor but muscarinic receptor is more stimulated in compared to nicotinic receptor here yeah. if there is stimulation of nicotinic receptor means there is increased action of ganglia sympathetic and parasympathetic both so if there is increased action of ganglia mainly when you are going for the stimulation of ganglia then mainly your sympathetic ganglia is more stimulated here yeah. so sympathetic ganglia is more stimulated then increase heart rate and hypertension but this is a side effect if given in high dose if pilocarpine is given in high dose then it will stimulate nicotinic receptors mainly it will stimulate m1 m2 m3 so if it stimulates m1 then it will, it will cause increased acid secretion as we have discussed m1 receptors are found mainly in acid secreting glands if it acts on m2 m2 is found in cardiac muscle and it is inhibited type of receptor so it will cause decrease in heart rate decrease in cardiac output decrease in bp acting on m3 receptor will increase secretion prestolysis urination as we have discussed m3 receptor is present on smooth muscle as well as okay smooth muscle as well as glands so it will increase secretion prestolysis and urination this is the general action now where we will use indications of this drug so it is used in form of eye drops okay eye has mainly m3 receptor and due to expansion of m3 receptor it will lead to contraction of circular and ciliary muscles and due to contraction of circular and ciliary muscle it will lead to widening of iridocornea angle and there will be opening of pelon of exclamation so it is you it and these two widening of iridocornea angle and opening of canal of slim lead to increase drainage of aqua humor clear so you can see this is your cornea this is your iris and this angle is known as iridocornea angle this is your canal of exclaim clear so because of this it can, it can be used in closed angle glaucoma okay now second it can also be given in, as oral tablet so it will act on m3 receptor it will lead to increase glandular secretion increase salivation lacrimation git secretion clear so it is all given in treatment of jogren's syndrome jogren's syndrome is in this disease in this disease we give pilocarpine because in this antibodies are formed against gland so secretion of gland decreases Okay, that will lead to dry mouth, dry eyes, and problem digestion. So we give pilocarpine to increase salivation, lacrimation, and GI secretion. So this is about directly acting cholinergic drug. Directly acting cholinergic drugs means it will directly act on your receptors. Okay, and we have discussed in two categories: esters, then alkaloid. In ester, we have discussed acetylcholine, methacholine, carbacol, and pethanicol. In alkaloid, we have discussed mainly pilocarpine. Clear? Now we will moving for the indirectly acting drug. So they will generally inhibit acetylcholine stress. So they, they are the acetylcholine stress inhibitors. It is again divided into two groups reversible inhibition or irreversible inhibition reversible inhibition in reversible inhibition there is formation of electrostatic bond which is a weak bond in the case of normally when you study chemistry there you read that electrostatic bond is stronger than your covalent bond but in, in our body electrostatic bond is weaker okay because there is lot of ions in our plasma that can cause breakage of this bond easily so reversible inhibition is uh, in, involving electrostatic bond formation whereas irreversible inhibition involves a stronger bond formation that is covalent bond formation here so irreversible blockers so irreversible blockers are divided into two groups organophosphate and carbamate first we will discuss irreversible then we will discuss reversible so it is divided into organophosphate and carbamate two examples that belong to insecticide groups that is your melathion and parathion melathion and parathion are insecticide and two nerve gases three 
that is zebun serine and semen these are the three nerve gases which belong to organophosphate which is irreversible blockers clear carbamates are carbaryl and propoxar that is also known as begon now coming to the mechanism how organophosphates and carbamate is uh, inhibiting your axon of uh, styloline stresses so styloline stresses are two sites that is this is the anionic site and this is your esteric site this is esteric site okay so this organophosphate bind to this because it is negative charge so it will not bind to anionic site so it binds to this site okay that is est esteric sites and for esteric site for esteric site hydrolysis is for esteric site to remove anything anything from esteric site we need hydrolysis clear and due to this organophosphate binding there is no hydrolysis hydrolysis is stop hydrolysis is unable to remove this organophosphates clear so if it will bind to this position then styloline will not bind to this position then styloline styloline will not be degraded then styloline leads to increase action on its receptors clear organophosphate makes covalent first it will form loose interaction for first it will form loose interaction with this site then it will after some time it will start to form covalent bond then after some time it will form covalent bond with this part okay and that is known as aging so organophosphate makes covalent bond with serine hydroxyl residues okay that is known as that process is known as aging clear and this is occurring due to absence of hydrolysis if hydrolysis was able to remove this then there will be no covalent formation there will be no aging but hydrolysis is unable to remove this organophosphate so there will be aging okay where in case of carbamate carbamate block both the sites very important carbamates occupying both the site and by these two mechanisms where, where it is carbamate or organophosphate these are inhibiting the these are inhibiting the action of styloline state and it is increasing the styloline amount that will lead to cholinergic poisoning means increase amount of styloline at its receptors and this cholinergic poisoning can lead to various effect first it will it will stimulate m1 then it will to increase acid secretion m2 then heart rate and cardiac output will decrease m3 then increase secretion leading to electrolyte imbalance if n mainly nm receptors is over stimulation then it will lead to down regulation of receptor that is leading to muscle weakness and this is called as cholinergic crisis due to more acetylcholine there will be more stimulation of nm receptor that will lead to internalization or down regulation of receptor that will lead to muscle weakness and that will cause cholinergic crisis clear yeah. and also it can this m3 due to m3 bronchoconstriction will be there diarrhea will be there urination will be there due to electrolyte balance there may be seizures so these are the side effects clear yeah. so if a person is taking insecticide or nerve gases so these symptoms may appear in those persons clear yeah. now drug of choice for this poisoning is your atropine that is if you give antidote to, to that person person who has taken these types of insecticide or nerve gases then you will give atropine this is the drug of choice for this poisoning atropine this is known as antidote this is used as antidote it will blocks all m receptor atropine blocks all m receptor but one drawback that is associated with atropine that it can block n m receptor atropine will not be able to block n m receptor because if suppose acetylcholine is working more on its receptor that will lead to cholinergic crisis if that receptor is inhibited by atropine then styloline will not bind to that receptor so action will be decrease so this is the function of atropine but one drawback that it cannot block any receptor it is only for muscarinic receptor so patient must be placed on ventilator because of muscle weakness we know any receptor is present on muscle so there is muscle weakness due to cholinergic crisis so patient must be placed on ventilator clear because atropine is not able to uh, block your any receptors now there is need of very good monitoring after giving this antidote clear and what things we will look for um, as improvement sign in this patient so if there is decreased secretion okay if there is decreased secretion in trachea mouth and axilla if there is decreased secretions in trachea mouth and axilla so these are the most specific sign of recovery because we have blocked the action of cholinergic system we are blocking the action of cholinergic system by giving a style choline by giving atropine so there will must be decrease in secretions of trachea mouth and axilla and this is the most specific sign of recovery the second we also look for chest auscultation there should be no wheezing sound during breathing because there is was bronchoconstriction here yeah. now we will also look for pupil size dilation heart rate must be more than 70 beats per minute systolic blood pressure must be more than 100 mg so these are the other signs of recovery if the patient is improving then these signs must appear clear dose of atropine is 2 mg iv route if no relief then repeat this dose if patient get relief after repeating this dose that 2 mg per day in iv fluid that is the maintenance dose clear so this was the use of your atropine now you can also use oxygens that is used also in so this oxygen is only used in organophosphate poisoning this is not used in carbamate why we will explain later on the second one is pralidoxism okay this acts on pm this is uh, the, the it has no action on cns it also uh, it only acts on cns pns sorry it only acts on pns no action on cns and here dose is 30 mg per kg if there is relief then we give 10 mg per kg per day clear yeah. next is diastyle monoxim this is oxygens these are diastyle monoxim so it can it has action on pns and cns both and it is given as 75 mg per kg now we will discuss about oxygens these are the important so this oxygens if suppose this organophosphate is binded to this site esteric site so if you give oxygens oxygens have positive charge so it will attract this negative charge 
okay and it is start it is start forming bond with this organic phosphate so it is start forming bond with organic phosphate there will be formation of this bond and after formation of this bond this group organic phosphate is removed from this side clear this organic phosphate is removed automatically from this side so this side will be released so there will be no so there will be decreased blockage of your styrocholine stress clear so everything is removed automatically from styrocholine stress so this leads to enzymatic reactivation styrocholine stress will be reactivated clear so oxymes can perform its action by this way oxymes are positive charges okay now in carbamate poisoning oxymes are not useful because an ionic site of styrocholine stress is not vacant as we have discussed in carbamate poisoning both this side both this side was occupied by carbamate we have discussed that in carbamate poisoning both this side is occupied by carbamate so oxymes could not bind to this because get an ionic site is not vacant in case of carbamate poisoning so oxyme will not come there so there will be no bone formation with this clear so because of this reason we are not using oxymes in carbamate poisoning now if aging has taken place due to covalent bond formation oxymes will not cause deactivation of enzyme fastly there will be reactivation but very slowly if aging has taken place means if organophosphate has formed covalent bond with this then oxymes will take more time more time to reactivate that enzyme clear very important point now in carbamate poisoning oxymes can worsen the situation mind it so we should not use oxymes in carbamate because in carbamate it cannot really get relieved from carbamate but it can worsen the situation okay if there is carbamate poisoning how look for there so this is your carbamate okay suppose due to any reason due to any effect this carbamate is removed from this side okay carbamate is removed from this side how we are not going to discuss the reasons suppose in any due to any reason this carbamate is removed from the here then styrocholine must bind there but if you have given oxygens then oxygens will bind here this anionic site okay and this will reduce binding of styrocholine so it will all lead to we will look for the management of poisoning how we will manage this poisoning Okay, this is a very important short notes on also asked in your semester examination. So first we will discuss about basics of poisoning manifestation. We have discussed that point. Now we will also look for the basic life support that is pneumonic cells A, B, C, D. First we will look for airway maintenance. Okay. So for this we will remove the secretions by either vacuum method or by mechanically using gauze. Clear. Now we will ensure breathing by either giving ambu bag or putting the patient on ventilators. Means we are making that O2 availability at tissue level will be normal. Now we will also look for normal circulation by giving IV cannula and we provide fluids okay that contains Ringer lactate solution. Ringer lactate is for electrolyte maintenance and normal saline for maintaining BP. We will also look for the dryness. We will also look for exposure. The We try to decrease the exposure of that insecticide or nerve gas for the patient. For this we will remove clothes of the patient because generally clothes have also those uh, insecticides which are spread by farmers in their field clothes okay on clothes these insecticide also present so we remove, we remove clothes we wash skin of the patient with soap and water we also use gastric lavage this is very important we use gastric lavage okay to remove drug from the patient's GIT so for this we put nasogastric tube okay and uh, we also give 500 ml normal saline plus 75 gram activated charcoal this charcoal acts as absorbent this will bind the drug which is present in its GIT clear this activated charcoal also called as universal antidote because it is helpful in many types of poisoning clear so after injecting this the nasogastric tube wait for 10 minutes and take then take out of all the those fluids clear okay after that we will give antidote okay after maintaining the thing for the basic life support we will get antidote that is atropine by IV root antidote during poisoning are given through IV root always clear then we also use oxymes we have discussed the mechanism of oxygen. Now we will give sim symptomatic treatment. If there is a seizure, then we will give anti epileptic drugs such as benzodiazepine. We also give antibiotic to prevent hospital acquired infection in this patient. So, this is the basic management of poisoning in the patients. Clear? So, this is about irreversible drugs, which we have discussed organophosphates and carbamates. Now, we will looking for reversible drug. Reversible drugs is again divided into two parts tertiary and quaternary structure on the basis of the structures of the drug. So, those drugs which have tertiary structure are non polar. Okay, that. that, that group of drugs are non-polar so they are lipid soluble so they have CNS entry so they can cross broad bone barrier so they can also enter liver and undergo lipid meta liver metabolism they can be given through oral route because they are lipid soluble so they can easily absorb now quaternary so quaternary group of drugs are polar so they are lipid insoluble they cannot take entry into CNS very easily because they are charged so their elimination depend on kidney okay instead of liver metabolism and they are not given usually through oral route because they have poor absorption so this is a basic difference which we have discussed in our pharmacokinetics video now Coming to the first tertiary drugs, we will first discuss tertiary drugs. So the first one is physostigmine. This is alkaloid. Now this is a drug of choice for atropine toxicity. If there is increased atropine in your body, for that this is the drug of choice, physostigmine. Clear? And this atropine is obtained from belladonna plant and dhatura. So it is also called as belladonna or dhatura toxicity. So this physostigmine is used for belladonna and dhatura toxicity. Clear? 
it is also used as eye drops because it increases acetylcholine action on m3 receptor that will cause muscle contraction that is muscle spasm that will lead to decrease intraocular pressure and it is also used for close angle glaucoma but pilocarpine but pilocarpine is the drug of choice okay we do not generally use physostigmine because it has action on your cns now the next group of drug is donepezil rivastigmine and galantamine okay they are all they also inhibit acetylcholine stress in cns clear they inhibit acetylcholine stress in cns so there will be increased acetylcholine action on nn and m receptors which are mainly present on nucleus bacillus okay nucleus bacillus has both these nn and m receptors nucleus bacillus has m receptors so there will increase acetylcholine secretion at m receptor so there will be more action on m receptor of nucleus bacillus so they will this will lead to increased memory so it is given for dementia and alzheimer disease so this donepezil is mainly given for dementia and alzheimer disease we will look for donepezil the donepezil is long acting drug among this donepezil is long acting drug so we give it once daily it also given through oral route clear because it is lipid soluble so patient compliance is good because of these two reasons okay and this is the most efficient drug for increasing memory this drug can also increase memory but this is donepezil is the most efficient drug for increasing memory so this is a drug of choice for dementia and alzheimer disease coming to the side effects of the donepezil so when given through oral route increases style going in git that will increase m3 stimulation there will increase pest houses so there will be diarrhea and this is the most common side effect here yeah, diarrhea is the most common side effect okay now there will be also loss of appetite okay because it, it acts on appetite center and causes decrease in activity of appetite center that will cause weight loss if this drug taken during evening and night time then it can cause nightmares so it is preferably given during morning because it has some action on cns so these are the side effects that is diarrhea loss of appetite and your nightmares so this is about your tertiary drugs that includes your we have discussed physostigmine and donepezil mainly it also includes rivastigmine okay so it also includes rivastigmine and galantamines so till now what we have discussed till now we have discussed about first we have discussed about your uh, 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 first we have discussed about irreversible blockers in which we have discussed about carbamates and organophosphate then we have coming for reversible blockers in which we have first discussed about physostigmine means tertiary group of drugs then we are going for the quaternary structure groups of drugs clear and before this we have discussed about directly acting drugs which has two groups also that is esters and alkyl bar in esters we have discussed about acetylcholine methacholine carbacol okay and bethenicol and in alkyl bar group we have discussed about pilocarpine like this clear now coming to the quaternary so the first one is pyrostigmine this is longest acting it has slow onset so because of slow onset it is only useful for maintenance treatment the next one is neostigmine this is second long long acting it has fast onset it has more potency okay so it is used in acute emergency and maintenance treatment both so this is five so it is mainly used then coming to the hydrophonium this is shortest acting drug so it is useful for making diagnosis we will discuss that point later on okay now how these drugs act so this is acetylcholine stress so this hydrophonium bound bind to anionic site and this neostigmine and physostigmine this bind to acetic site okay and displacing any drug from acetic site required hydrolysis so this physostigmine and neostigmine are long acting but this displacing any drug from anionic site does not need hydrolysis so hydrophonium action is very less this is the basic reason now where these drugs are used so the other drugs are mostly commonly used in myasthenia gravis what is myasthenia gravis we know that if there is increased antibody formation against your n receptors okay n receptors in the muscles that will cause myasthenia gravis that will that can cause decrease in contraction of the muscle so there will be muscle weakness like that and this is most common in if there is history of fever and th then thymus gland start forming antibodies against n receptors we will discuss in different video about myasthenia gravis okay so we will give pyrostigmine to inhibit the because of the destruction of the receptors okay there is muscle weakness so we try to inhibit this acetylcholine stage so that more and more acetylcholine will be available so more and more action on the remaining receptor by the acetylcholine we want to increase acetylcholine time in the synapse this is the basic logic now myasthenia gravis is of three types that is it can cause local muscle weakness generalized weakness myasthenia crisis localized means one or two muscle group are involved mainly eye muscles in generalized weakness all muscle group are involved in myasthenia gravis myasthenia crisis we will discuss later on this now in this local muscle weakness we usually give pyrostigmine 60 ms 60 mg we give neostigmine okay 50 mg if not relieved by giving pyrostigmine and neostigmine then we add immunosuppressant such as cyclosporine azathioprine if we add immunosuppressant immunosuppressant then it will decrease antibody formation but we must keep in this point one point important point here that we should avoid steroid because steroid has side effect that is muscle wasting so we should not give a steroid for the generalized weakness treatment so we give pyrostigmine neostigmine plus we also perform thymectomy and if after this two if not relieved okay then we add immunosuppressant now myasthenia crisis so patient is known cause of myasthenia gravis we are knowing that patient is suffering from myasthenia gravis and taking pyrostigmine and well control this we are knowing okay but there is sudden increase in muscle weakness due to increase antibody production so this will this is known as myasthenia crisis so in this we have to perform plasma pheresis so its treatment is we should perform plasma pheresis or we can give intravenous immunoglobin so that it can give negative feedback for formation of antibody which are destroying your nm receptors so this is the second method or we can also use short course of steroid such as 
predicinone all okay one mg per kg we can give okay predicinone colon we can give one mg per kg in this case so plaza phrases or this or we can use also steroid now so this is the treatment of all types of myasthenia gravis that is generalized weakness or localized weakness or crisis now we are going for the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis so best test for this is electromyograph okay the second one is ab detection that is antibody detection assay okay you can find antnm antibody anti muscarinic antibody the second most important is your hydrophonium stress that is also known as tensilon test if there is muscle weakness muscle weakness can be due to two reason either due to nm block or destroyed nm receptor is block or destroyed by due to myasthenia crisis or nm receptor is over stimulation over stimulation lead to desensitization and this is known as cholinergic crisis so muscle weakness can be due to two, two reason either myasthenia crisis or cholinergic crisis so first we give hydrophonium 2 mg intravenously first in the both cases we are not knowing patient has come to you with the complaint of muscle weakness patient has come to you with the complaint of muscle weakness you have to find that whether the patient is suffering from myasthenia crisis or patient is suffering from cholinergic crisis clear for that differentiation we provide hydrophonium 2 mg through iv route now this hydrophonium action is it will inhibit acetylcholine stress so it will inhibit acetylcholine stress and it will increase activity of acetylcholine so if there is worsening of symptom means more acetylcholine is formed and due to this after giving hydrophonium if symptoms get worsen then it confirms your cholinergic crisis because in cholinergic crisis nm receptor is overestimated and by increasing more acetylcholine it will it will lead to overstimulation again okay more overstimulation so that that will lead to worsening of symptom so it will confirm that patient is suffering from cholinergic crisis so you give atropine for the treatment if there is improvement in patient after giving hydrophonium there is improvement then if if there is any improvement after giving this dose then you must give 8 mg hydrophonium if further improvement is seen then it is confirmed that patient is suffering from myasthenia crisis clear so you can easily make diagnosis first give low dose then high dose first we have given low dose then we have increased in the case of this high dose now another that is lambert eaton syndrome lambert eaton myasthenia syndrome in this this calcium channel which is present on presynaptic membrane is damaged by your antibody in this case we also give pyrostigmine and neostigmine clear now the next one is cobra bite so neurotoxin will block your neuromuscular junction receptor okay and that will decrease acetylcholine release that will lead to muscle weakness also treatment of choice for this is first we give anti snake venom that is antitoxin for that neurotoxin and along with this we give neostigmine so it will inhibit acetylcholine stage and it will increase acetylcholine activity clear yeah. okay now post operative retention of urine and uh, paralytic ileus in this case we can also give this neostigmine plus ringa lactate solution also there is post operative reversal of smr that is skeletal muscle relaxation because for skeletal muscle relaxation we use crude drugs here yeah. after this post operative we use neostigmine to increase acetylcholine at nm receptor that will open the block which is done by crude drugs so this is all about